Hello and welcome back to the Mini Hack Solved series. In this episode, we'll solve a hack to configure a custom component to interact with a standard component using dynamic interactions. If you haven't watched any of the earlier episodes, let me tell you that Mini Hacks is one of the most popular zones in Dreamforce and Trailhead EX, where people come into the hack zone, pick up a hack to solve a business problem. Hack contains the requirements on what to do, but not how to do it. Hack also specifies which features to be used while you solve the hack. So let's go ahead and see what hack are we going to solve today. The title of the hack is Update Standard Components from Custom Components Using LWC Dynamic Interactions. The description is informative, which says that the Lightning Message Service allows interactions only between custom components. But you can use dynamic interactions to send events from custom components to both the standard as well as custom components. As said in the description, a custom component can send an event to other component. This custom component is called the source component and the other component can be called the target component. A developer can create the source component that fires a custom event. Later, the admin can choose one or more target components that can listen to this event. The admin can dynamically configure these interactions in the Lightning App Builder. We will use all of these steps to complete this hack. If you want to learn more about dynamic interactions, you can check this quick take build components that communicate with dynamic interactions. You can also find a link to the documentation in the description below. Ok, let us now look into the requirements. The first requirement is to create an app page that contains three columns to hold three components. The first component is an LWC component that contains a slider. The slider should accept values between 1 and 30. The second and third components are standard. One is a rich text component and the other is a recent items component. Both are standard components. And also the features to be used are app builder, lighting web components and dynamic interactions. Let's start by creating a custom component that holds the slider. I am in VS Code in an SFDX project which is already connected to the org. Let's create a lighting web component by launching the command palette. Let's give it a name. We can use a slider based component for our requirement as we are going to use the slider. Let's check it in the lightning component library. Let's search for the slider. Here you can see a preview of the component. Let us copy this HTML code and paste it into our components HTML. Similarly, copy the JS code and paste it into the JS file. The requirement says that the slider value should be between 1 and 30. Let us see the component specification if we can find some properties that can hold the minimum and maximum values. We can use the max and min values here. Let us also change the default value to 2. Let us make this component available to the app page by setting it in the meta file. And deploy the component. Ok, let us now create an app page using lightning app builder. Let us select three regions and click finish. Ok, let us see the requirements once again. In the first column, we need to add the custom component. Let us do that. 
search for the component and add it to the first column. Okay. Next, we need to add a rich text component with some initial text. Let's drag and drop the rich text component and copy paste the text from the requirements. Next, we need to add a recent items component showing five records. And it should show records from account, contact, case, and lead object. Enter five for the number of records to display. Let's activate the page and add it to any of the lightning apps. I have already created an app called mini hacks. So let's add it to this app and save it. Let's check what it looks like. We have completed the first part of our requirements. Let's now check the rest of the requirements. The following changes must automatically occur when the slider value changes. The number of records shown in the recent items component must be updated to match the value chosen from the slider. Okay. The rich text component must be updated to show the message slider value has changed x number of times, where x is the number of times the slider value was changed. Cool. We are going to use dynamic interactions to fulfill this requirement. You can refer to the Salesforce help documentation and also the dynamic interaction section in the LWC developer guide to learn about it. I have read through it, so let's go ahead and implement it. We'll implement dynamic interactions in three steps. One, define the event in the source component. Two, expose the event in the lighting app builder UI. And three, finally, Configure the interactions to one or more target components in the app builder. Let's start by changing the custom component to define the event. Let's add an on change handler for the lightning slider. In the JavaScript file, let's implement the handler and create a new custom event with detail. We will be sending the slider value through this detail. Give a name for the event. Let's say slider clicked. Now let's go back to requirements and see what value need to be passed in the event. For the number of records, we need to pass the value chosen in the slider. So let's add a property count to the event detail for the number of records. We can assign event.target.value to the count. For this requirement, we need to pass the number of times the slider value has changed. We can create a clicks property and initialize it to zero. This property is going to store a value whenever the slider is changed. We can increment this value and send it in detail whenever handler is called. Let's refactor the code a little bit. The next step is to expose the event in the Lightning App Builder UI. We can do that through the meta file. Let's copy the target config from the sample meta file in the LWC developer guide and change it. We only need to specify the event and its details in the target config tag. So let's remove the properties that are not needed. The event name that we have given in the JavaScript file is slider clicked. So let's add that name here and let's also add the label and description. The label and description are what are displayed in the app builder. Let's give a meaningful name 
and description. Schema is where we will specify the data that is sent in the event detail. So, let us add the two properties count and click to the schema. Both are integer data types and we can also add a title and description which can be used in the lighting app builder. That's it. Let's deploy the code. Let's edit the dynamic interactions page now. Let's select the slider component. Unlike other components, you can now see that the slider component has the interactions tab. We can configure the interactions with the target components here in this tab. Let us configure interaction with the recent items component. Let us click add interaction. Here you can see the source component is the slider and the event is the slider clicked. You can also view the event properties count and clicks. Here it lists all the available components on the page. Let us select the target component. In our case, it is recent items. The recent item standard component exposes the number of records to display as public property. It also exposes label and object property which you can leave with default values. Let us now set the number of records with our event property count value. We can access the event properties using dynamic syntax. Let us now see our last requirement. The rich text component must be updated to show the message slider value has changed x number of times, where x is the number of times the slider value has changed. Let us add one more interaction now. This time let us select the rich text component. In the rich text contents, let us copy paste the message from the requirement. Let us change the x value with the dynamic syntax. Let us replace it with the event dot clicks. Let us select display as card. Let us save it and check how it works. You can see that it displays the number of records that we have selected with this slider. Awesome. But there is one problem. The number of clicks in the rich text is increasing even while I am dragging the slider. It should only be incremented only once my dragging is done. So what is the problem? The on change event is fired for every microscopic change of the slider. Then what is the solution? If we can delay the dispatch of the event until the final selection is made in the slider, will be able to send only one event. This can be achieved by debouncing logic. You can google the debounce logic and see how to use it. Ok, I will show you how to implement debounce logic. It is simple, we will add a timer and delay the event dispatch say by 200 milliseconds. The most important point of this logic is we will be clearing the timer whenever the handle change method is called. I am adding this as the first line of this method. What it does is if you get an on change event within say 200 milliseconds the timer is reset. This ensures while we are dragging whenever we are getting the events those events are all discarded and only the last event gets dispatched. 
Debon's logic is a nice hack to delay the dispatch of the event. Ok, let's deploy this code and test it. You can now see that the number of clicks increases only once for each of my slider selection. And with that, we have completed solving this hack. There can be more than one solution for a hack. If you have a better solution, please let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please click the like button and also don't forget to subscribe to get notifications on newly added videos to the Salesforce Developers YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video.